Weird. Has anybody else presented here? Yeah. It's, could you? Yeah, thank you. I had it on the like presentation style. Yeah. But now it's showing me this, which is fine, but I like the clock and the notes. And right. Stuff. So you do it from here. It's the same, right? It's not weird, but it looks all oh. good up here. Confusing. Um. I mean, that was neat. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Look at you. Good. You're so good at life. I mean, just turn off the turn button. Uh-huh. Okay. I think I'm going to get started. Um, thanks, everybody, for coming. Uh, I am going to chat a little bit about using Perceptive with peer review. Um, I was hoping to be here with the instructor. I'm an instructional designer, um, but I worked with an instructor on this, but he couldn't make it to the conference. His sister got married, so he's not here. Um, and I also wanted to thank Heather Garcia from our office who came up with a land statement um, for us. So um, anyway, without further ado, I, I was just a little bit curious about kind of who's here. Uh, do we have like instructional designers? Okay, uh, or instructors, cool. Okay, so it's a good mix. Um, and then how much do our folks, like I'm super interested specifically in the tool Perceptive, or I'm more interested in just peer review kind of generally. Oh good, okay. I tried to build something that's a little bit flexible, so bear with me, I'll try not to get too far into the weeds with Perceptive. <laughs> I'll tell you a little bit about it um, in case it's something you wanna explore in the future, but. Um, Okay, here we are. Oh, any Woo grads? Nope. Western Oregon University grads. I was a Woo grad, so they're cool. See them, they're one of the sponsors. They have a really great certificate program and master, so. Uh, okay, um, and then a little bit about OSU, um, 50 plus programs that are online, over 9,000 students, um, and ranked a few different times. Oh no, it's not showing on your end. Sorry, folks. I don't know what's going on. Do that goofy thing again. That's so weird. Was this an earlier slide? Like, is the projector set on freeze? Oh, I don't oh. know. What's, what's freeze? Is oh, it the yeah. ice button? Oh. <laughs> <sighs> no, it, it's where you, like, make the projector keep the image up so you can do other stuff without, like, seeing it. I don't think so, because it was showing different stuff mm -hmm. earlier, but it's a good thought. Maybe just exit presentation mode. You, you might be able to follow just follow the slides, <laughs> and it's less fancy. Okay, we can do that. Yeah, it's not even like I'm doing it. For some reason, your webcam's on. Yeah, it's on my computer. So right. I can I just close Exiting? this? Yeah. yeah. There's okay. my email. So okay. Uh huh. Okay, that's a good start. Did you download it? I did. Oh. Okay, so it should live somewhere. Like in the downloads, maybe, or if we go back. Yeah. It's Didn't been goofy. Yeah, it keeps exiting out of uh, the presenter view. Oh. And I don't know why. Uh, did you stop the the recording on purpose? Oh. Uh, no. No. Okay, so what's yeah. so so what what do you want? You want it in presenter mode? Yeah, I had it up before, I downloaded it. Hopefully we can open this and then uh, open. Whoops. No, I, I think I did good. Oh it's downloading. Do you download me? It's still downloading it. Two point oh. six, two point nine. Okay, I had well, it open a bit ago. I don't know if there's an old okay. version. Okay, yeah, well let's go to downloads. And actually, let's we'll, we'll duplicate. Oh, the screen is duplicated. Okay. Isn't that strange? Oh, 
That's word. Yeah. That, that's the one you wanted? Mm -mm. Is it getting rid of the downloads when we... Hmm. This isn't it. Well, let's see. Can I preview it with my email? And at least that'll get us through presentation for folks. Is that what this is? Yeah, but it at least gives us something. So did you download it to the... Upload it to the site? I did, but um, it was... I made changes this morning. Oh, okay. So that wasn't the one that was in the folder. So that's why I downloaded it earlier and we had it up. But it just keeps exiting out of presenter mode. And so you had it up in PowerPoint? Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe just, just if you're okay. The slides here. Yeah. yeah, we can make that work. Can we? We can do it. You can do a start slideshow. Sweet. I'll start the recording again too. Okay. Okay, so maybe this will work. It's a little slow. Okay, um, so uh, thanks for your patience. Uh, in terms of overview, I was going to give you a little bit of background on the course that we uh, were doing this uh, staged peer review project on. I'll tell you a little bit about perceptive, talk a little bit of pros and cons about um, the particular way that we set up the peer review assignment and some of the things that we learned in the process and then wrap up. Um, and we have some options depending on time um, to be able to go through and kind of think through an assignment of your own if that'd be useful. So the course was uh, a nutrition course and the instructor had um, this is the course description. Um, and so one of the pieces was they wanted to be able to apply uh, scientific knowledge to current health issues and discuss nutrition controversies. And so when we first met, one of the, th the themes that I was hearing from the instructors is they get exposed to a lot of different information about nutrition and they have to be able to go through and say, is that, is that really research-based? Is that really valid? Or is this sort of just a trend in dieting? And he wanted his students to be kind of more sensitive to reading through and identifying that more clearly. Um, and so why we ended up deciding on peer review is he wanted an alternative to discussion board for some learner-to-learner -learner interaction. I'm sure this is familiar for a lot of folks. Um, and, uh, and he ended up, this ended up being a group project as well, but um, I know some folks are sometimes looking for things outside of those, those kind of popular options. Um, another goal of his was to keep the content current without having to constantly update the materials. So the way that he decided to do this in the course is that the students were largely going to be teaching each other about different controversies, and he was going to be providing them prompts, but then he didn't need to curate all the information. Part of their work in this was to, to present to their peers, so they're the ones then curating the current information. And so as trends and fads with diets change, he's changing out the topics. He's not trying to find all the research that goes along with it, because that's what the students are doing. Um, he also had a goal of reducing some of the grading burden, um, which I'll talk a little bit about perceptive of how, how it can do that to some extent. Um, and then also exposing students to many different topics while allowing them to go deep with one particular topic. So it wasn't realistic for students to get to know every nutrition topic, um, you know, like keto dieting, like they weren't going to be able to learn that really in depth and um, a vegan diet and some of these other pieces. And so it allowed them to get exposure by peer reviewing each other's work of a lot of different topics and also allowed them to go deeper with the topic that they had with their group. Um, and he also wanted students to practice giving and receiving feedback. And I think this comes back to the evaluating validity of claims. Is It's not enough for them to see if a claim is valid or not, but it was important that they could articulate to others whether or not a claim appeared valid to them so that they could practice that. So in the real world, they could go on and, and communicate that to others. So, um, I have a worksheet. 
um, where you know you could just turn to a partner at the same time though and just say, is there an assignment where you can think of um, using peer review and kind of think specifically, what's the course, what's the assignment or series of assignments where peer review could be interesting? Um, and then describe the assignment and, um, and explain maybe why peer review might be a good fit. Does this feel like a good fit for us to do or do we want to cruise a little more with the presentation? Cruise? Meet with another person real quick. Yeah, oh. Cruise. 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 Okay, we're going to cruise. With the um, so this particular project, um, he would call it the CTIP, the Controversial Topic Investigation Project. So um, here's a little bit of how he described it for students, um, but basically they're evaluating these claims. Um, and it's divided, the project was divided kind of into two broader parts, although there's several parts within it. And the first is to independently find some articles on their own, and the second is to work with others who change the same top, choose the same topic and create a presentation to their peers, um, kind of summarizing that. And so when I talked about the list of kind of topics that he would update for students, these were some of them. So um, is keto diet healthy or just a passing fad? Um, what are the benefits or risks of a vegan diet? So things, coconut oil is one that's like, that's very in right now. People are like cooking things in coconut oil and bathing in coconut oil. And, um, you know, he really wanted to be able to kind of swap these out as, as there are new trends coming in and out. Um, so stages, when we talked about this, we talked about how to stage it for students, hopefully to be more successful. So um, many of the students maybe have not done a presentation before. So in his introduction, he wanted to have students do um, like a screencast presentation of themselves because that's a pretty low stakes assignment to get used to doing the screencasting piece um, and a chance for them to get to know each other. So that was in Canvas. It's the presentation. It was set up as a discussion board. And then the students selected a topic. Again, this was in um, a Canvas discussion. I'm sorry, it was an a, a individual assignment. They would select their topic. Um, and then they met their team in a discussion board. So once he had the teams of the different topics, he put them into small group discussion boards where they could meet each other and figure out how they were going to work over the course of the term. Um, and they also worked at a group contract, sorry, at that previous stage about how they were going to work together, what everybody's roles and responsibilities were, so some teaming. Um, and all of that is in Canvas, which is likely more familiar for students than perceptive. So after he's done all of that work, then the first thing they're doing is an individual assignment. It's an annotated bibliography. They're finding some information that they think might be helpful for their group to um, submit into Perceptive. And the idea with this was that um, it's pretty straightforward. It's not a high point assignment, but it allows them to practice using Perceptive as a tool. So they're going in, they submit, submit in Perceptive, and they offer each other peer review on the resources that they put in there and whether their annotated bi bibliography is uh, formatted correctly. Um, and then from this point forward, it's just different sections of the presentation. The way that he set it up is they're doing a presentation, so a screen cross presentation, submitted as a group into Perceptive, and then they evaluate other groups. Um, and that starts with an introduction section, an evidence section, a groups and some gaps in knowledge, like things that we don't know yet at this point, and a summary section. And along the way, they're getting feedback from their peers about what was good about the presentation, what could be improved. And for the final presentation, they're expected to go back and look at that feedback that they got at the various other stages and integrate that into their final presentation. So I'm going to keep cruising but those questions will be in the slide if you want them later. Um, so things that work well uh, about Perceptive in the courses is it, it's research validated. Um, so uh, basically there's a chance for students to do peer or self-assessment. In this case, he didn't do any self-assessment. It's all peer assessment. Um, and the goal behind it is ongoing process of feedback and improvement. So they're not just getting feedback at the end, but they're getting feedback along the way. And what they find is that students submit higher quality work originally uh, if they see, know that their peers are going to see it. So we would love to think that the highest quality work is for you as instructors, um, but they actually feel a lot of um, pressure is maybe not the right word, but they, they want to perform well in front of their peers, and so the, the, the level of work on in the initial drafts tends to be higher. 
Um, there is also an option for team member evaluation. So if you do group work in your course and you like the idea of folks um, doing team member evaluations, that's within the system. Um, and that students learn both by giving and receiving feedback. So not only do they learn by um, reading the feedback they got from their peers, but that process makes them, like as they're reading someone else's paper and seeing how they approached a certain part of the project, they, they start thinking about it differently. Um, and the dashboard also flags grades that are way above and beyond. So the, I think the big thing that's juicy for people with Perceptive is it's an external tool that integrates with Canvas or other um, platforms, but uh, it has a grade pass back based on the grades that students give each other. And, um, and so grading wise, that can mean less work for the instructor for some of the phases um, because it, it's weighted and that's the research validated piece. Um, so it's double blind. Reviewers do not know the identity of the authors they're reviewing and the authors don't know the identity of the reviewers and they have some research around that minimizing bias. Um, and the instructor can also go in and do some reviews to kind of benchmark uh, the reviews that are in there. Um, so that's a little bit about it. Some other things that worked well, they have really good uh, support team. So if you have questions, they're, they're a really helpful tool in that sense. They're happy to look over assignments before it starts. Um, and there are options to do things like in his class because he didn't really have a a traditional course in the sense that there was like learning materials pages, like their learning was really coming from seeing each other's presentations. Um, so he wanted them to do additional reviews because he's trying to expose them to many more topics than sort of the default and they, they will allow you to edit those sort of things. And for um, the golden yummy overachieving students, uh, there's options to do bonus reviews. So if you have students that are looking for ways to get additional points, you can do bonus reviews, which can help cover if there's students that don't do all of the reviews. Um, Perceptive works really well in that when you submit your assignment, then it gives you any students that have also submitted their assignments to review. So instead of students being like, I'm paired with Megan, and Megan hasn't turned it in, and I want to do my peer review, but I'm waiting on Megan to get it done, and my grade's kind of impacted by that, it takes that out. It says, I'm, I've submitted, I can take from the pool of anybody else who submitted and is ready to go. And as the instructor, you're not having to like wade in and navigate that. And then if I'm like really motivated, I can pull an extra one in. So it, it just helps you to make sure that every student gets a review because that can be a, a point of frustration. And it also sends email reminders for an uh, assignment when it's open and available to submit, when reviews are open, and when there is 24 hours left and not everything is complete. So that takes a little bit off of the instructor as well. Um, so in terms of phases in peer review, the options are that they upload an initial draft um, submission of the assignment, then they review the documents um, using kind of the method we talked about, and then this phase isn't required, but it's recommended, which is back evaluate, which is feedback on the feedback they were given. So you now, I've gotten feedback, I'm gonna go back through and look at what people said and I'm gonna rate how helpful it was and how accurate it was. And, and the reason that's important is one, it's what holds people accountable to do a good job in the review phase. And it also uh, increases the likelihood that students are actually gonna act on the feedback that they got. Um, and from there, they upload a final submission. Now we skipped that in this because it was stage assignment and we didn't think it was realistic for students to do that at every single phase. But with a lot of writing assignments, if they were discrete writing assignments, you might want them to then act on that feedback and do the um, final upload. Um, and then they receive the grade. And the grade can either be sort of manually generated after the instructor's reviewed it or can come out automatically after they've gotten their peer, the peer reviews from their peers. Um, and the things that feed into their grade is uh, the, the document grade, so the actual grade they got from their peers um, on the quality of the submission that they submitted. Um, the, the review and grade, so how good their reviews were based on people's back evaluations. And then the task grade in terms of how uh, well they did things on time um, and, com and to completion. So if they did the initial draft but didn't do their um, peer reviews or the back evaluations that would lower their grade. The defaults for that are 40%, 40%, and 20% for the task grade. You can play with that a little bit, but they kind of recommend that's a, a kind of intuitive way of breaking that up. And then that will pass back to whatever grades you, a point value you've set in your learning management system. So um, things to keep in mind, 
it, with using perceptive specifically is um, students may grumble about their grade. And uh, part of that is that they may feel like their instructor should be the one to grade their work, to look at their work. So um, that's a concern that sometimes come up. They don't trust the accuracy of the review process, like the tool, the idea of it being weighted based on the reviews. Sometimes like it's just a, it's a big trust ask of them. Um, and it's really hard to get a perfect score. And it's sort of the system is set up so that it's almost impossible for students to get a perfect score. And so if a student is used to kind of being the 100% achiever, that can be hard. Um, so to address that concern, um, a course introduction video or perceptive uh, process quiz, he did a quiz in this course. There's another instructor that uses it a lot at um, OCUE campus. And he does like this beautiful video that explains like why is peer review important and this is how uh, academics use it in the field and this is why it's used when we're submitting journal articles. And so it's explaining to students like this isn't, this has benefits for you as the learner and it's an important skill for you to take on. And I think that helps him to, to get buy-in and also it, it's a chance for him to talk about how the system works to weigh the different grades. Um, and there's also, I, I have not seen an instructor do it, but I think it would be a great idea um, to offer opportunities for extra credit or other ways to like win back those points so that um, like student spirits and their morale around it is high. Like it's, it's okay that you didn't get 100% in your peer review and, and maybe there's a way that you act on the feedback or you reflect on some part of it and you're able to win, win those points back. Um, Oh, yeah, and then he said, you know, sometimes the system's imperfect, like they're only reviewing three people, um, and so, you know, it's important to go in and check. So, for example, he had a student where she got a pretty low um, accuracy score with her feedback, but he actually felt like her feedback was more point on. It was just different than the other members of the group, but she, he felt like had better feedback, actually understood the assignment better. And so he had to go through into the dashboard and kind of edit the grade, which isn't difficult to do. But, you know, it's it's tempting to think that it's a set it and forget it, but I think it shouldn't be, and you should let students know. Like, you know, it, it does this automatic weighing, and if you have questions about it, I'm available, or, you know, here's ways that I'm going to um, be testing kind of the accuracy. Um, and then the biggest hiccup in his class was that pres the presentation feature doesn't work well. So Perceptive works really, really well um, with... Um, written assignments, but it's not as strong. The video assignment submission was just like throw in a URL. So if students didn't make that public and share it correctly or, uh, you know, for whatever different reasons, that, that could lead to um, some issues with then they get the, they go in to peer review someone and they can't access the video um, and there's no real way to, to deal with that. Um, and it, it does take less time to grade once you get it set up, but the rubrics take more time to set up. So peer perceptive is different in the sense that their rubrics have to be on a seven point scale. So, um, you know, if you're not used to using a seven point scale, that's something that you have to think through differently. Um, and also, um, you need to be a little bit more explicit for students when they're reviewing each other than you would be for yourself. So you might be like, okay, I'm looking at mechanics and this is worth this percentage. Well, students really need you to kind of drill down what it is that you're asking them to look at very specifically because um, they, won't, they won't necessarily know and their tendency is to kind of give some more positive, positive feedback than negative feedback. Um, and groups don't automatically communicate between the two. So if you set up groups in Canvas or, or whatever LMS, you'll need to create them in both. Um, yeah, so anyway, some other quirks with using the perceptive system. Um, I think the part that's probably most relevant, whether you use perceptive or not, is, and I think was really strong in this particular course, is thinking through how you're gonna set up the assignment for various stages. So for example, here's some instructions that I put in. Um, in Canvas, it's really only one assignment, right? But it has these multiple phases. So it's easy for a student to get lost if they're just looking at the course calendar. And, you know, just like with the discussion board, they don't always realize, okay, there's the date that my initial post is due versus my reply posts. And so um, if in the class that we were working on, the initial submission was due week three at 11.59, the peer evaluations were due. So spelling that out really clearly for students so that they know, okay, I actually have to return to this assignment several times and that there's multiple phases within it, even though it's only kind of one gradebook entry. Um, 
And, you know, with with peer review explaining your late submission policy pretty explicitly because it really holds other students up like you can't you can't kind of continue so in his case he didn't allow for late submissions um, and also explaining it sort of explicitly the 40 40 percent 20 percent because it's not very clear in perceptive when you do that that grade pass back so again anything with the grading if you're doing like if you're using canvas peer review i would say the same goes like if someone peer evaluates are you taking the grades that students offer in the peer evaluation or are you also entering it and averaging yours in or um, is that just informative and their grade doesn't set anything and you and the instructor is going to grade just being as uh, transparent i think about that as possible is really helpful um, and then some other peer review tips. I touched on this a little bit earlier, but really explaining the benefits of peer review early on from the student's perspective. So you have some benefits of it as the instructor, potentially with grading or the amount of reading or um, pieces like that. But from a student's perspective, they're getting exposed to different topics or, um, yeah. So I think it's important to, to really take a moment to explain specific to your class why that's important. Um, and then using multiple assignments or stages of an assignment. I think Canvas, has anybody used Canvas peer review? Yeah, it's kind of clunky and awkward, yeah. And so like I've seen a lot of folks use it for just the final assignment. And then it's like if a student just really didn't get how the tool worked, it's like they're really being penalized for not understanding the tool, maybe more than their ability to use it. So it's. It's nice even with a larger assignment, like where are some natural breaking points that you might kind of check in with a student along the way um, and, and grade those as lower stakes so that they can just get familiar with the peer review process. Um, yeah. Um, and then using tabs, accordions, although someone was reminding me that tabs in Canvas are being deprecated, so don't use tabs, but accordions or other um, videos um, to explain complicated assignments to avoid some overwhelm. So like in his case, he had all those stages, right? It'd be easy for a student to get really overwhelmed by that. So I think, you know, starting with a high level overview and kind of highlighting piece by piece the part that they're in. Um, and also in a video, I, I just feel like a video versus a long text description of like, you're going to be doing this massive progress. And like, there's 25 different parts, like sounds really scary. But if you have just someone that's like, hey, it's basically this, somehow it's less scary. Um, and then he created a course calendar. It's linked in my resources that gave kind of a, a mile high view of the deadline. So students could kind of see broadly, okay, I have this about every other week, I'm gonna have a peer review because there were so many different phases and I kind of get the sense of that, okay, I, like I'm submitting a draft, then I'm peer review and back and evaluating. I'm submitting my next draft, I'm peer reviewing and back evaluating. Um, they can't see that when they're in the granular assignment. So having a course calendar in the beginning when they're introducing the assignment was really helpful. Um, writing detailed rubrics and revising them, like if they keep kind of having the same snags, revising what's in there. Um, and the group contract he said was really helpful. So I have some resources here. There's a blog post coming up soon um, that's through OSU's uh, blog. So. It, there's a link to the blog generally and eventually in the next week or two, hopefully, uh, the peer review blog post will be up. Um, but it has some resources in it in terms of, um, you know, what other institutions kind of recommend in terms of staging your um, peer review and then perceptive, um, some rubric best practices that are pretty specific to them. And then I can pull up this example course calendar. Um, it worked. Um, that can give you an idea for his class how he set up a course calendar um, where it's kind of on the right hand side is just the um, CTIP deadlines, the CTIP deadlines, and talks about the phases. Um, and we did that to kind of keep what was happening general separate from this particular project to try to help with the overwhelm of like, okay, this is this project and just the deadlines that are there. Um, so given that we didn't workshop, I kind of flew through that. Um, do folks have questions or tips on how they use peer review? I've never used peer reviews online specifically, but I uh -huh. have wanted to. Um, one of the questions that I have that you may have actually addressed and I just missed it, but um, is, it, is each uh, student being reviewed only by one other student or are there multiple students reviewing 
each uh, each paper in each iteration of the paper, and then the the total grade is an average of multiple students reviewed. So is that possible? yes, um, in perceptive, it's you set the max number. Okay. Um, so it can be one if it's just one to one. It can be three is their default max, but okay. you can ask them if you want to, to have more. But they don't recommend it in perceptive specifically because it's very, you know, they have really really detailed rubrics. Okay. Um, so you, you know, how many times can a student like really pour themselves into reading and giving that level of feedback? Mm -hmm. Probably two to three times is a max. But again, it may depend on the, the course or if you're setting up a simpler assignment where that makes sense. In Canvas, I don't, someone correct me if I'm wrong, is there a max number that they peer review? I think you just set the number. So you could have as many as you want. Okay. Um, and, and my understanding is the instructor still grades in that. The student uses the same rubric that the instructor uses. Um, so, you know, again, you might think about maybe you would not normally set up a rubric for yourself the same way you would for a student that's not familiar. Um, but students that are seeing, using the rubric, and I think the benefit of that is they're seeing exactly how you would grade, or you're saying you would grade the assignment. Um, yeah, but it's there, it's a little, like we know speed grader or whatever, and so it's fast and intuitive. There's, it just takes a little bit of getting used to, it's easy to forget steps in Canvas. My experience, yeah. Either of you, do you want to rock paper scissors? <laughs> I, I have a couple of questions. Sure. Oh, a couple of minutes late. I apologize. No, no. Uh, could you explain perceptive? Is this like a, a, a college-wide license that's obtained, or is the plugin? Um, yeah. It's an external tool. It's available, I think, on their website. What was it? It was D2L, Canvas, Moodle, and Blackboard. Um, and I, I, for us at OSU eCampus purchased, I don't know, a license or whatever they do so that we can use it. Um, but yeah, there is a cost associated with it. I don't know how they set that up. Uh, what instructions do you give students for the feedback? What are you looking for in terms of how it's Yeah, it would depend. It would depend some on the assignment. Um, so, like in this case, part of what he was, he had dimensions. So, the rubric, you know, you can have multiple rubrics kind of over larger categories. So, he had categories that were like um, the, the quality of the evidence presented. He had uh, a section that was the quality of the audio and the video, which was worth you know, a lot less, because that's not really the primary part of the assignment, but he wanted to catch those issues early so that later on, by the final presentation, it wasn't like an inaudible presentation. Um, he had, um, yeah, so, you know, those were sort of generally the categories that we have, but it would depend on, I think it would largely mirror however you would grade as an instructor, whatever it is you're looking, I would look at the learning outcome, Think about how you would grade as an instructor and then simply make that more explicit for students what you mean by those different sort of categories. Um, and then the helpfulness of the feedback, he, if I recall correctly, he linked out to resources that were like, this is a helpful kind of review and this is a not very helpful kind of review. And, and what's nice with the back evaluation and peer perceptive, which you could build into an assignment in another way, but you're going to have to do more of the sort of manual checking, um, was that you're rating the feedback that you got. So if a student was like, no, this isn't applicable at all, they had a chance to voice that, or they could realize like, oh, I, I hadn't thought about that. That was actually really helpful. Was, did that answer your question? Do others, I'm, and if others have comments or thoughts, chime in. So, uh, you're talking about the differentiating between uh, or providing models for helpful peer review versus, uh, but how is that uh, achieved? If I understand if the peer review is, you know, students actually comment and write comments right. to somebody's 
writing and they say, oh, interesting paper, that's obviously right. not helpful. Right. Right. But if it's a rubric, how, how can I different this, yeah. this is helpful and this is not helpful? So I've seen a couple different approaches people have taken. So one is uh, like attaching a form that they fill out. So they're, um, they don't use the rubric in the assignment. Mm -hmm. um, they attach a form that's kind of walking those through that might have a rubric in it or not. But it allows them kind of to give more expanded comments on the different sections. So I've seen that work really well. Mm -hmm. um, and depending on the instructor style, some people leave it more open-ended. Some of them it kind of ends up looking somewhat rubric-ish. <laughs> Right, right. And then if people use the Canvas one, same, same thing where it's they, you know, they just instruct the comments. What I don't like about the comments there, there's not a lot they can do to kind of really hit a lot of different points before it starts to look clunky. So again, I've seen people use the rubric, but still have a form that sort of more specifically address things like how, how, did you, how would you make recommendations to strengthen the thesis of this statement or what, was, what did you think the thesis of this was? Even just seeing that, sometimes for students, it's like, oh, they, they couldn't even identify where my thesis was. Like, obviously, I need to mm -hmm. work something out. Um, I think forms and Canvas have helped. Yeah, my understanding is it is screen reader ready. I don't think they can do audio feedback. I think it's all, just trying to recall if I remember seeing, nope, I think it's all written feedback. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. I think that's important. I think it's important. It, it often doesn't fit in a week if we're on like a term 10 week system. Like there, you're probably at least with this going to have to arch two weeks just, you know, for students with disabilities, but also just like working students that often work on the weekends. You, you got to give them a little bit of time. So I would say it takes a little more space if you're used to having things due every week. Maybe they don't peer review every piece of it or um, you're combining, and I, but there's going to have to be some strategies to build in some spaciousness, I agree. Right, one more question. Sure. Okay. Um, could you flip back to that list of resources? I think there was like a link to a worksheet or peer review planning worksheet. This is, yep, uh, I can pull that up. I have hard copies here. It's not as fancy as you're going to think it is. So get ready for less fanciness. Um, but one of the things that was helpful in talking about this calendaring, this is kind of the key things, is, you know, what's the assignment or stage? When is the first draft due, the review due, how many number of reviews are you going to have, when's the feedback on the feedback due, if you're, if you're including a phase of that, um, and then what's, when's the final draft of, of that due. I think that's probably the biggest strength in this is just for you to see like, oh, how many of this. I would say you probably on a 10 word term can do four, maybe five phases, and the five is going to feel, I think, pretty tight if you were to do that. But I can pass around. Well, what does the instructor do at the end of the term? So the students generate the grade, and the instructor assigns the grade that students get on the peer review, or does the instructor then have to go in and evaluate the peer review on their own and give everyone a grade for their peer review as well as the assignment itself? You could set it up that the student's grade, as they were average imperceptive, is the grade that's going to be assigned okay. automatically. I would very strongly not recommend that, and that's not what this instructor does. I think. From like a student trust perspective, like they want to know, especially the final assignment, they want to know that your eyes were on it. So I think it's one thing if there's lower stake assignment stages and, and you don't look at every single one, that's maybe okay, but especially the final one. And particularly in his case, because he did it as a group project, the grading burden there was not as high as if each individual student was doing a, a presentation. Um, but. I, I, he also doesn't have a massive class. I think one of the other courses at OSU that's using this, it's like 
hundreds of students in the class, so he, yeah. he does have to sort of depend on the tool, but I think he does some other things so that, you know, not every part of their grade is generated from that. Or, like I said, it flags real, real anomalies in perceptive, and if you're not using perceptive, the same thing, like, go look, and if anybody just, like, seemed to have gotten really either scattered peer reviews where someone's like, this is awesome, and someone's like, this is terrible, that would be something that I would go through and say, like, that seems strange. What's the difference there? And it's also a chance for you to give feedback on the reviewers to say, I noticed that you, you know, didn't mention these things that I saw. Like, can you tell me more, more about this? Because these are things I would flag um, and talk to the students because I do think it's pretty natural to feel uncomfortable. They're not used to giving their peers that feedback. Um, but to say that, you know, that that's actually okay and encouraged. And that's part of what he had to do in this course is just tell students, like, you, it's okay for you to give that feedback to each other. Uh, do students see uh, each other's feedback? They see each other's feedback in uh, perceptive, but they don't see who it's from. So they see the feedback in the various entries so of those feedback. The feedback. On the product, they're reading, but, yeah. Oh, so is it annotated? And then I see somebody else's review, so I'm just going to copy the scars. Or... No, 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 yeah, so I don't see... I can't see how someone else reviewed something I'm reviewing. Yes, that's a good question. I don't, is that true in Canvas as well? Okay. Okay. But if you set up a small group discussion, um, for teams and you know four or five students that they're gonna be uh, graded you know on their outcome of the project so they're the, you know going through a learning process of using that feedback as a positive motivator for the whole group to you know improve you know their annotation or their bibliography or their um, you know there's a gap in the research in some place right. you know I, I think that's a, a place where they're going to see each other's names because they're working in a, as a team. Um, but their evaluations are from other groups. So this, at least in person, am I not understanding your question? No, no, I'm just saying you, you said you could set up, you know, the small group, dis, uh, small group discussion. So at that point, it's inner group uh, peer feedback to right. improve their own project. And then at some point it goes out to be um, anonymously uh, reviewed by another team or so in terms of the feedback within the system that what they create as a team they submit as a team and then other teams gave feedback in his course um, but they couldn't see which team gave them feedback and it, it's actually it's a little weird you're submitting as a team and as an individual you're rating grades but they couldn't see oh this was Susie that reviewed our group's team but they obviously I mean they know each other and who has worked in their group project part they just don't know who commented that you know they were missing a source or that one of the they didn't know if one of the sources was credible um, I have seen in peer reviews the alternative is people will set up a, just a small group discussion and they peer review each other but obviously you lose the anonymity in that and the, t the timing piece is off right so if if someone has a different schedule sometimes that's hard in that structure did that answer your question yeah, yeah okay. I'm just trying to um, figure out how it can be streamlined a little bit you know just because Blackboard offers discussion groups and mm. you know they're going to first peer review each other you know they're they're doing it for the benefit of the group the team and I'm trying to then think of the next step, how they're going to get feedback from other teams. I, I'm, I'm structurally, I'm trying to figure that out. You know, how do I open up uh, their work to another person? Right. Like and a small group, how do I? How would you, so, okay, so you're saying this small team maybe is in a discussion board, they yeah. produce a product, and then how does that team share it with other teams? Do, do people have thoughts or recommendations? So,
Okay. I have seen people do like a large group discussion at the end where they post it and you're just told to, you know, access the one that you're reviewing to submit in a peer review, if that makes yeah, sense. That's, that's probably um, the way to do it. In yeah. But it's, you know, it takes a little bit of, okay, where am I going to tell them which is theirs and then, you know, get them access and make sure that I have all of them and they're organized in some way that's easy for them to navigate and then and then they go to this other assignment to submit. You know, so there's just a few different phases. It's it's it takes a little finesse, but it's possible, I think. I have a question on uh, preparing the students for the peer review. I'm sorry? I have a question on preparing the students to do it for peer review. Mm. Because one of the things I found is that when faced with the same criteria as students that the grades are from the teachers, I guess where you get the flags on yeah. you know, the screen. Is there a process or is that a process for they actually, that's a, look at you, planted you. Uh, there is an option in Perceptive to do a practice one where you have like kind of a practice assignment that has, you know, where you, you're really hoping they kind of pick up on these certain things and they have a chance and then you as the instructor can give some feedback of like, these were the types of things I was hoping that you would see and here's some of the things that you missed and, you know, as you're going forward, but they're not looking at anybody's actual work at that point. Um, I mean, you could get like, you could have them do feedback on feedback as an assignment that could, you know, that's another way that you could maybe address it. I think you could do a discussion board maybe and say, read this and what, what feedback would you offer and just allow them to talk through that. But I, I think, I mean, I don't know about you all, but I feel like that's just peer review. Like in our office, we peer review our blog posts and I'm going to get really, really different feedback from different folks and that's maybe okay. But it, again, in perceptive, He's kind of keeping track of where does he see discrepancies a lot and then changing his rubric there to try to hone in on where, okay, these ones, they all seem to be giving kind of similar feedback and this one's really different. And so that maybe that's an opportunity for me to look and see what's not clear here. So just to piggyback off of that, uh, something that I've seen instructors do, and this takes a leap of faith and some radical trust with their students, which I think is really great. Um, is they actually share an article or an essay that they've submitted for a, a journal, and they share the reviewer one, reviewer two comments that they themselves received with their mm -hmm. course, mm -hmm. and then the students kind of get to see what it actually looks like mm -hmm. out in the field, and they can use that as a model, and then the instructor themselves, through their experience, can say, you know, reviewer two's comments were not super helpful for me, and here's why, or here's how I edited this. And so that can kind of be a little peek behind the curtain, too, and mm. just as a separate assignment before they hop into something like perceptive. That's a good idea. I like that. So another just activity to add prior to getting to that place is just having, uh, I have a, a peer review a uh, rubric review activity where the students um, in a team would be looking over the project rubric mm. at all of those phases and they're asked questions you know what you know identify three things that your team could do to move from um, uh, you know let's just say efficient to, to uh, you know proficient or whatever the, the titles mm. are and so they have to look at going from like a four to a five and they look at the rubric and see how what they could do as a team, maybe add some additional evidence, maybe oh, like compare that. to other you know, mm -hmm. um, opinions or something like that. So it, it, it's actually um, a whole activity sheet that they have to go through with their team to practice looking um, you know, at the rubric for the project and 
within that, they're also learning um, how to peer review. So That's great. Oh, I've got a lot. Stage. Yeah. Huh. Clever. Cool. Other thoughts? Questions? Can you tell us, you said you didn't have a, if you don't mind, I don't mean to put you on the spot, okay. that you didn't have a great experience with Canvas peer review. Yeah, it's just so like you said about okay. the, the things were due for kind of interesting to do. You would have to put one date for when. So like say if I want to be an assignment, you do on the 10th. Right. But then the reviews are due on this date, but you can only do one day. Right. And then I don't remember them being in my rubric. I mean, I had rubric. That I was using, okay. which I also didn't like because you either had to do just the numerical without me being able to add my right. own written, like, so say, and I was like, um, you are a two on this, but I couldn't type because XYZ. Yeah, so okay. It was kind of very broken up. Like, so we do like, hey, where do I find, you know, who am I getting? Yeah. This person didn't do mine, or it was just. Right. I've seen some folks do a no submission assignment so that they can have two different rubrics. So then, you know, you're you're saying this is the rubric where I'm going to grade the feedback that you gave, and this is how I'm going to be grading your feedback piece. But it also acts as kind of a calendar reminder as well. Um, so that somewhat, but I agree, it's awkward, right? Like they're just, it's a little strange. I do that, but it is a submission assignment, oh, and they okay. have to provide a summary of the feedback that they gave, oh, so cool. I get a sense that it actually happened, and they reflect on what they gave. Nice. And I'd heard about an instructor doing like a letter to the editor. This wasn't from peer review feedback, but when they got feedback from the instructor, they had to like write a letter to the editor back to their instructor about the feedback that they received, and anyway, just how they were going to integrate that or what it meant to them or whatnot. So it was their sort of catch that they were actually reading the feedback from the instructor. So, I don't know, interesting ways of kind of pulling those together. Cool. Other thoughts, questions? I'm, I'm just curious how, uh, what's the student's perception? Uh, do you get a lot of pushback or...? Yeah, uh, I think, so I'm not the instructor, oh, okay. but... Um, the instructor did mention, and, and he felt like they were really valid sometimes. So um, I, again, I think one thing that I would have recommended for him was to do more explaining the process up front. So there is another instructor who uses it and doesn't have a lot of grumbling, but has a very, very detailed explanation of how perceptive works and how the grades are generated and why it's important. And um, But I think the instructor present piece, him saying and being available to answer those things as they come up, um, and making a commitment to grade at least some of the assignments seems to address that a lot, because I think it it feels yucky, right? Like if you're just like putting it in and it's getting a grade and no one's looking, and he does the release after instructor review, so he doesn't just do the manual release when you've gotten enough reviews. I don't know what this is, but my computer decided oh it's the screensaver I was like is this another presentation am I being kicked out cool I think we're close to the five minute mark did I remember that yes which the etiquette was to try to wrap up then in our presentation notes so if others have questions I'll take that sheet of paper back if people put name and email I have cards I'm happy to chat so uh, thanks so much for coming and yeah enjoy the rest of the conference